Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Today is July 16th, 2020. I'm Mark Cook, CEO of Shiny Shoe. We are the creators of Monster Train. And today we have something big launching. Just within the last hour, we've made available our first big update, free update, Wild Mutations. It adds a significant amount of new content to the game. 35 new mutators that can be used in any mode, including single player, which is new. We've got 15 expert challenges for your Covenant 25 players out there. Uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Featured community challenges. There's just a lot of new things. I've previewed some of it over the last few weeks, uh, but we can look at a few other things today. Um, so yeah, I hope you will go and check out Wild Mutations. And during the stream today, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has with regards to what's going on with the update, what's going on with the game. If you want to ask questions about balance changes or new features, I'm happy to facilitate that. Uh, but while we are waiting to see who shows up and what questions might get asked, let's play some of the new content. So I'm going to jump over to the game. Here is Monster Train. I love in my little overlay here that I've got our imp with the fun googly eyes, which of course is one of the new mutators that we featured in the past. And to answer that immediately, uh, some of the people who helped us play on the public test server, and thank you for that, for everybody who participated there. I do think we, we definitely eventually want to make googly eyes not a mutator, basically, so that you can use it um, without turning off progression in single player. So uh, that's something we were definitely thinking about. All right, jumping into the questions. Are you planning on making this game available for Mac or mobile devices? That was Emerson Booth asked that question. Um, right, yeah, we are, di okay, let me put it this way. <laughs> I have to be diplomatic on these answers sometimes. Make sure I don't promise the wrong thing. We are definitely considering other platforms that we are going to bring the game to. So, I don't know if we're going to come to Mac or not. I don't know if we're coming to mobile or not. I would say we're probably coming to at least one of those, um, but no definitive answers with regards to timelines and so on at this point. It's definitely our hope to come to as many platforms as we can uh, so that we can reach as many gamers on the platforms that they're playing on. So I know right now we're only on Windows, but we are going to come to as many platforms as we can muster uh, in the coming months. Alfie 1881 says, hello, when you translate the game to Spanish? That is a very common question, and we get a lot of offers for people uh, who are offering to translate the game too, so, you know, I appreciate that there's definitely demand for a Spanish localization. It's something we are definitely talking about and considering among other languages as well. I have nothing to promise at this time currently with regards to a timeline, but we are definitely thinking about it. All right, Binkley asks, is Volatile Gauge the most talked about artifact in terms of balancing XD? Uh, yes, yes it is. It is uh, the most complained about, that's for sure. Uh, so we definitely had a lot of feedback about that during the uh, public test of the Wild Mutations update. And um, here, I'll just, since I'm just answering questions right now, I'll just jump back over here. Um, yeah, so it's something we're gonna keep an eye on. I, the change that we made, just to bring everybody up to speed, is Volatile Gauge, uh, randomized between zero and three Ember previously and added additional three card drop. Um, and it had, the, it had a very high pick rate and a very high win rate. So we wanted to bring down its power a bit. Uh, and at first in the public test, we tried moving it to zero to four Ember, which definitely makes it worse. Uh, and people really didn't like that, primarily because if you take it in the early game, you can roll a four Ember card, which makes it unplayable, which can feel especially punishing uh, if it is applied to a unit, let's say. Uh, like in the early game, you might only have one good unit besides your champion. And if that gets hit by four Ember, that's going to suck uh, for you. So we understand that. And so we are trying an alternative approach. So now Volatile Gauge randomizes between one and three Ember. Makes it a little bit less good. Uh, we have a lot of people who bring up Slay the Spire when talking about balance, uh, which is fine in comparing Monster Train to it. Uh, but, you know, we have to take into the fact that this is a different game and it works differently. And one important difference about Volatile Gauge is we respect Ember cost reduction upgrades on cards. So if you add something that lowers the Ember of a card, that happens after the Volatile Gauge randomization is applied. 
So in that way, it's even better in our game uh, in terms of the strength of the artifact. Now, a lot of people who complain about the Ember change say, you should have changed card draw instead. Uh, and, you know, we'll consider that too. Yeah, that's some, I mean, we could be wrong about this change and we're willing to be wrong about things. We don't think we're like making every single perfect decision, but we want the game to get to a better place balance wise. And we are, have to make changes for that to happen. And we're gonna to continue to look at analytics and data and player response to all the changes that we're making and we're not like we're willing to go backwards on things if we feel we need to but for right now we think this is a good change for volatile gauge it's taking it into the right direction and we're going to be watching carefully over the next day or two all right alpocopatroleros that's a long name more imps when we need more friends more imps when well as a teaser I can say that Wild Mutations is not going to be our last update for Monster Train. And there is another major update in progress right now that will be coming in the coming, let's say, weeks, months. Not right away, of course. We just launched Wild Mutations. Uh, I think there is going to be something interesting for the imp lovers out there. I'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, on stream over the coming weeks, I'm sure we'll be previewing things and talking more about it. But uh, yeah. Just a little tidbit for now. Benomoth, any new cards or balance changes in this update are planned? Where can we find them? Uh, so there are a lot of balance changes, actually. Quite a few bug fixes and other things that are um, not specific just to the new content. So you can see all of the details either in-game. Uh, in-game, the viewer that we made, I'll say, isn't the best, but you can view them by clicking patch notes. Um, and when that loads, eventually, it'll show them all in there. Um, or you can check on Steam as well. Uh, if you just look at the store page for the game or in your library, there should be a big banner, a big button that says Wild Mutations. If you click that, it opens this big news post that goes over in detail all of the new features and all of the balance changes. Death Torn, where, when can I buy a Monster Train t-shirt with the title screen art of the Bone Shaker? Cool idea, yeah, merch is something that we are definitely talking about. We've started talking about it and thinking about what would be cool. Um, so yeah, if you have any other suggestions, let us know. I definitely want an imp plushie. So <laughs> I'm not promising that by the way, but it would be cool. All right, Binkley, would you consider adding tool tips to the different dead fell symbols so the players know it's double barreled, multi-strike, etc.? cetera? Uh, yeah, that seems like a good idea to me. I mean, there's we're not trying to hide that information. And in fact, I think even the icons, uh, we've had some feedback that those could be clearer. So I think improving the icons, and we might as well add tool tips too. I, I don't see any downside to that because um, we want you to plan ahead, just like we tell you which Seraph variant you'll be facing. Uh, there is you know, the intent that you can plan ahead for those things. So clearly we're not communicating that well enough on data list and fell, so we definitely uh, can improve that. Thank you for the feedback. All right. Kyle Cleave says, what is your favorite monster type? Wax or tomb, imp, etc. And why isn't it imps? More imps, please. What is my favorite subtype? Let me look through the logbook real quick. Here, let's jump back over to there. Uh, speaking of, before we go to that question real quick, here is the new card mastery frame feature. I showed this last week, but just for anybody who didn't see this, this is another thing we added in the Wild Mutations update. You can unlock these card mastery frames, which I don't have any of them, it looks like, uh, by doing a variety of different things. And then you can uh, choose those as an alternative to this kind of red and gold mastery frame. And we also added the ability to completely disable mastery frames if you so wish. We've had a couple of people ask for that. All right, jumping back to my favorite subtype. I mean, Imp is definitely a really good one. I do love those little guys. And Transcend Imp, the best, the best of them. Huh. I think, you know, I do think Sirens are pretty cool. I do like the Siren subtype, but Morsels, Morsels are kind of Imp-like. They're really cute, they're fun. All right, I'm going to go with Morsels. I like Morsels the best. <laughs> All right, the third rate gamer, Shrek update. Uh, 
Yeah, we could get some new time. We could try to figure out how many Shreks everyone has collectively watched. If you turn hours of Monster Train played into hours of Shrek watched, I, I did really enjoy that uh, that post. So thank you to the community team for putting that together. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have an update that I can give you live, but it's more. It is more Shreks. Even more. Fluffatron UK says, Just realized in the trailer that is playing in the right corner that the enemy units come in as cards. Are the enemies cards? Is there actually another non-player entity playing cards against us? That is a really interesting question. You were right. In the um, initial kind of marketing announcement trailer, the enemies do come in as cards. Uh, yeah, hmm. Who would it be? Who would be controlling the forces of heaven? Maybe it's Seraph himself who's playing the cards. Maybe it's someone else we haven't seen yet in the Monster Train world. Things to think about. Uh, and I will say that when you think about other types of new content that might be interesting to add to the game in future updates, certainly bosses might be something that's on your mind. Anyway, we'll see what happens. All right, moving on. Actu... Actuarial. Any plans to add extra levels to the ladder? Going to level 30 or something would be amazing. Um, yeah, into the kind of map of hell. That's definitely a uh, request we've heard a few times is some people have asked for like an infinite mode to be able to just keep playing and playing if they like their deck. Um, and we think that's kind of interesting and definitely would some people would like it, we think. Um, but we think that there are right now things that we could add to the game that would add more value to more players, including even to the people who would like to have like an infinite mode. Um, and I'm talking about like new content, like new new cards, new whatever, new things like that could really increase the artifacts and so on. Uh, would increase the variety of different play styles and things you can do in the game for everyone. So for now, we are more focused in that area and less focused on things like adding a, an infinite mode. Um, but that doesn't mean I'll ever say never, you know? We might do it, or we might extend the map. However, like, the kind of lore is about the nine rings of hell, so you do go through uh, eight battles, which takes you from the first ring to the ninth ring, so it's a little bit hard to expand that without some kind of lore explanation, I think, but uh, I'll leave that to the lore guys on the team to, to think about how they'd want to approach that. All right. Um, <clears throat> Sure, if you have feedback about this type of stuff, uh, in addition to telling us on Discord, discord.gg forward slash monster train, if you're not already there, uh, you can also use the feedback feature in game where you can press the F8 key is the default keyboard mapping and you can type in whatever you want and send it over to us and we will see that feedback. So feel free to submit whatever you want, bug reports, uh, balanced feedback. I mean, if you just want to send some love to the devs, we love that. We get hate mail through that too. I wouldn't encourage you to do that, but if you really feel like there's something that's really making you mad, feel free to tell us. We listen to that too. Um, all right, Toast Mold says, it hurts my feelings when my Stygian champion dies so easily to sweep. Could they ever get a few more HP or do you just consider it a unique challenge that clan has to face? Um, yeah, we're trying to balance around that basically. Uh, by trying to make the Stygian champion really strong in other ways. Um, because we think generally that trying to create like uniquely strong elements it makes it more strategically interesting than trying to like bring everybody to kind of a similar baseline uh, when it comes to balance. So I can't remember offhand, I'd have to go back and look at the, the notes because we worked on this update for you know the last six weeks or something to see if we had changed anything about the, the Stygian champions uh, stats or abilities in this update. I'm not sure if we did. Um, but all of that information was kind of, or decisions, a lot of the decisions were based on all this data that we collect and player feedback. So uh, if we didn't change anything about the Stygian Champion, it must have meant that the design team didn't think it needed any changes. Um, and there's definitely ways to get more HP for your uh, Stygian Champion. Um, you can pair with the Awoken Clan, uh, which has ways to gain HP cards like Steel Enhancer, for example, comes to mind, which that got buffed. Uh, Steel Enhancer costs one less Ember now. I didn't remember that specifically. Um, so that is something that you can do. All right, Kira Velar says, is there any plan changes to the Shards of the Pyre event? Feels underpowered compared to other caverns. Uh, which one is Shards of the Pyre? What does it do? We don't have those in the logbook. I'm like looking back over to the game. Um, I 
think there's there's definitely at least one Concealed Caverns event that's way underpowered. Uh, at least we get feedback about that a lot, which is the one that gives you either uh, Bone Shine or Bone Rattler, um, which I don't think is the Shards of the Pyre event. So um, that one we think we do need to modify. We did not modify it in this update. Uh, we made it more rare, actually, to, for it to appear, which is kind of a band-aid. It's not like a real fix for it. Um, so I think we need to come up with some alternative design for those cards. Um, so that's something we're thinking about. Uh, but Shards of the Pyre, I don't remember which one that is, I'm sorry. So if somebody tells me which one it is and what the rewards are, I can talk more about it. All right. Beov FFT, is there any plans for a reconnection feature on Hellrush? I feel like even a minor hiccup in my internet instantly kills my run. Um, well, I'm sorry to hear that. It wasn't a bug that I was aware of. Um, I don't think we are planning on a reconnect feature because the time pressure goes forward so quickly. So if you weren't able to reconnect for a minute or two, you're probably, I mean, you're like guaranteed to lose basically. Um, so there is not a plan for that right now. However, I would be interested to know more about what your problems are to see if there's some way that we can fix them. So if you experience that problem again, please press F8 in the game and send feedback. Uh, it sends us your log file as well, which might help us with some diagnostic information to really understand what occurred there to see if there's something that we can do to improve the situation for you if you have uh, some internet stability problems. Like maybe we're not testing in the right way to try to find a good solution for that. All right, iChop says, is there any plans for alternate sk art skin for minions? Um, not right now. So no, we, I think we would rather add new cards and new characters than alternative skins for existing ones. However, I will say that um, I think the dev team, and it seems like a lot of people out there like the googly eyes feature as like a fun, silly thing that we added to the game. Um, and right now it's implemented as a mutator that uh, basically if you enable it in single player, it prevents progression, which we can talk about if people want to talk about that too, uh, which is not ideal since it's only a cosmetic change. So we hear you on that feedback. We want to change that. And so we might add other kinds of like cosmetic wacky things like that um, that we that we may modify how it works, but uh, that you could add on to players. But we don't currently plan to like have some way to take an existing unit and make them look totally different. You know, we're putting our resources into making brand new characters in units that will be released at some point. All right, Dan Wolf says, <coughs> uh, whoops, sorry, I skipped one. Dermazo says, are there more challenges planned in the future? Um, for the expert challenges, uh, we don't have any immediate plans, I guess just because we just immediately released uh, this update. You may have missed this. Uh, I'll just say it again. I said it a few minutes ago, but yeah, this is not the last update for Monster Train. There will be more coming. They're already being worked on. Um, the next one is going to have a lot of things that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in. Um, and because we've had a little bit more time to set up for it compared to Wild Mutations, there's going to be, I, I guess I'll just say, more uh, more new stuff. I don't can't really spoil it or talk too much about it now, um, but it's coming. All right, Dan Wolf says, will there be any plans to expand on some of the unique unit interactions? For example, alloyed construct with fuel and inert or soul tomb with souls. Uh, I think not under the existing set of cards. There's no plans right now to like change what something does to be a unique mechanic that uh, doesn't currently exist in the game. However, as we add new things to the game, that's always an opportunity to add new mechanics. And that's probably going to happen. So um, watch out for that in the future. All right. Death Torn. Can we get the ability to get a results page of a public hell rush? If I win or lose a round, I don't get to see what other people played or chose. Yeah, that's definitely something that's not great. Um, I agree with that. I am not sure how we would approach that exactly, implementation-wise, for it to just make sense in terms of how all the tech works and everything, but we have all the information. We have the data. Uh, people's runs at the end of Hell Rush, they're all uploaded to our servers, we have them. So um, that's definitely something that we can facilitate somehow. Um, so we'll think about it. We've, we've heard that request before. Can't promise that we're doing it for sure, but I do think it would be nice. I mean, a lot of people also want spectating. 
uh, of people if you die so that you can watch other people we would you know we want that too on the dev team um, that one I can say is probably very unlikely to happen but the ability to just see the end results of a hell rush and browse other people's decks and kind of try to get a sense of their decisions from looking at that that seems like something we should be able to support uh, Kyle Cleave says how many individuals are working on Monster Train are more expansions DLC etc coming in the following year is there a roadmap how many, okay, well, I'll answer the first question. Uh, how many individuals are working on Monster Train? Try to count them up. Something like eight-ish on the core dev team, eight or nine, and then there are like seven or eight additional people who are external from the core team that are playing important parts uh, of like doing art for cards and so on. So there's maybe like, 15 people working on the development team and then we have our friends at Good Shepherd Entertainment on the publishing side helping with a variety of things and then there's people translating it so like if you there's some people that play you know they work on it full time you know nearly seven days a week right and then there's some people that do a small part but they're all also included so I guess if we like added up everybody even the people doing like small parts it's probably something like 20 to 30 um, but in terms of the core development team, it's around eight-ish, and then there's yeah, a number of other people who are doing important parts that come and go kind of as, as needed. All right, guess Ben says, when looking at the relics, uh, sorry, my phone's vibrating under the table, which I'm sure is bad for the mic. Let me move that. Um, when looking at the relics, oh, I'm sorry, Cal Cleave, I didn't answer, finish answering your question, so I'll go back to that first. Are more expansions DLC, et cetera, coming? Well, I think I just said that, so the answer is yes. Do you have a roadmap? Uh, we have an internal one. <laughs> we're not ready to announce any of the details of exactly what we're doing. Uh, and part of that is we want to have the flexibility to pivot rapidly to try to do the things that we think are the coolest and are going to add the most value to the game. And as developers, sometimes we're wrong. Like our ideas for what that might be, we start testing it, we realize we were wrong, we want to throw it away. And you know, we don't want to have promised something that we then cut even before it comes out. So we will announce things like what we're doing ahead of release of the next update. Um, but I don't, we're not ready to announce specifically what we're doing just yet. All right, now let's move over to guest buttons. When looking at the relics called artifacts in Monster Train, why were there never any relics artifacts that interact with certain keywords like harvest, revenge, and slay off the top of my head? don't have a proper interaction with them. Um, Harvest, Revenge, and Slay. I think you are right that there are no artifacts that interact with those. As to why there aren't any, I have no idea. Uh, so I, <laughs> I'm i not the, uh, the lead designer of the game. Um, but I can tell you that we're probably gonna add more artifacts and those certainly look like juicy areas to potentially consider adding additional effects that trigger off those mechanics. Look for the next update. All right. Abe, Abby, Abby 44. Shouldn't there be nine fights instead of eight since there are nine circles of hell? Um, the reason why there are eight is you start in limbo. So to you're starting in the first ring, basically. If you started off the map completely, conceptually, and you had to do a battle to get into the first ring, then there would be nine. We decided that there should be eight uh, because partially... Uh, it's about the length of time that a run takes. So we had a pretty precise target for the amount of time that we wanted to target, and uh, we tuned towards eight for that. But yeah, those are the nine rings of hell is because you start in limbo, which is the first ring. All right, crit source, crit SRC. What is the stance on buffing obviously underpowered or underused stuff over nerfing established threats? Like what's the goal of tinkering the balance towards? Uh, in the update notes, our lead designer, creative director, Andrew Krausnick, wrote up like a very specific block of text about what uh, the balance strategy is for the game overall. So if you want to see all the details of that, please go look that up. It's on the Steam community. You can see it from the library, your Steam library or the store page um, in a big banner that says Wild Mutations. If you click on that, you can see all the details. Um, but broadly, we did buff underpowered stuff in this update as well. Uh, and that same page I just referred to has every single patch note in excruciating detail about what was changed. Um, like I was just saying, there were a couple of cards for sure that got uh, buffed. Let's see, you know, off the top of my head, this is just like a small thing, but Steel Enhancer went from one ember to zero ember. Um, 
I'm trying to remember other things that were buffed recently. We definitely buffed some of the champions too. Um, the Wrathful path got buffed. The amount of rage you get on re revenge was increased. Do, do, do. A number, there were a number of changes. I keep resetting my save data, so I don't have everything unlocked here, but um, there were no, quite a few changes to Rector Flicker. I think every single path changed. I know for sure Accumulator got buffed. Um, the Harvest mechanic, we, we had this issue. So this is one of the major changes um, that a lot of people, we got a lot of feedback on. I think some people didn't like it because it did break one synergy, but we felt we had to to be able to make other types of balance changes that we couldn't do, basically. And so, all right, um, let me describe it. So the problem was Harvest was really hard to tune because it was too strong when you combined any Harvest unit with Umbra because morsels were counted as dying whenever they were eaten. Uh, and because of that, and because you can generate so many morsels uh, with the Umbra clan, uh, we couldn't make Harvest very good, and so Harvest sucked if you weren't playing Umbra, if you weren't like combining it with Umbra, uh, which then, that's not a great place for balance to be. It basically just means like, for if you wanted to play Accumulator, Rector Flicker, you basically you had to pair it with Umbra, otherwise it just didn't make any sense. So um, we made it so that when a morsel is eaten, they don't count, it doesn't count as a death. Uh, it counts as like, I don't know, they're eaten. It's, they don't die. They, I don't know, they stay alive in the stomach and then get pooped out later. I'm not sure what the lore is. But for gameplay, we thought that was really important uh, so that we could buff Harvest, so that Harvest becomes more useful of a mechanic. Um, and so a number of Harvest characters, but most importantly, Rector Flicker's Accumulator Path, got buffed uh, in some cases fairly substantially, I think. Um, which was something that we felt we could now do after we changed how morsels work. So um, I know that change feels weird, and if you just loved like being overpowered or feeling overpowered by combining specifically um, the Melting Remnant and the Umbra, then you might be just a little bit sad, but we think changes like that are important for the game's overall balance so that it becomes more viable to combine Harvest-oriented cards and units with um, other clans. So. Anyways, uh, more details on kind of the overall balance strategy is in that post, like I said. All right, Abby44, do you think the difficulty progression in the fights are good? Like it becoming progressively harder on a consistent scale? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're in, we're pretty happy with where that's at right now. Uh, we have a lot of data about how hard things are, basically, and have made a lot of tuning changes to battles over time, although recently we haven't really changed them that much, to be honest. Um, so we, we think it's in a pretty good place right now. If you have specific feedback where if you think something is out of balance, personally, just let us know. Hit F8 in the game, type in whatever it is you're thinking, uh, and we'd be happy to look, take a look. The dev team reads 100% of those. All right, Abby44, what do you think of dual class artifacts as in artifacts that use keywords from both of your allied classes? Like, for example, enemies gain one frostbite for every spike damage they take. That's a cool idea. Yeah, we've, we've definitely like kicked around a few ideas about um, certain things happening if you are playing a specific combination. Uh, like, this is an idea that we're probably not going to do, but was something that was floated at one point, was the idea of like, adding a specific champion if you play a specific combo. Um, so like some hybrid champion that like merges the worlds of the two clans. So I, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, I guess I don't have anything else to say about that right now, but I think it's a cool idea. All right, Binkley. I hope there's a cosmetic mod with sunglasses on every character. I like it. Yeah, yeah. What is it? The deal with it meme, right? They should come down at first when every time a new uh, character spawns in. Malt222, if they ever make a movie about Stephen Colbert's life, I hope they hire you to play young Stephen. <laughs> well, thank you. I like Stephen Colbert, so it's, uh, I guess, it's flattering to be compared to him. <laughs> it's the first time I've heard that, but I appreciate it. All right, Fluffatron UK, why do you have a roadmap for a game about trains? Shouldn't it be some sort of track map? Good point, sir. Very good point. Death Torn, what was your major inspiration of the train theme? How does it feel to be the best deck building game ever? Well, that is very wonderful praise, so thank you very much for saying that. Um, our main inspiration for the train theme, 
I think uh, when we first started Monster Train, I, I must have said this on a past stream, but I'll be happy to revisit it again. Uh, it was in a castle, not a train. Uh, this was like very early on in the super early prototyping. We were just experimenting with what we wanted to do with the game, the gameplay mechanics and so on. Uh, and we like it was just using some like free pixel art online it, like looked totally different it's just some prototyping stuff we were doing internally and uh at that time we were trying to think of like themes that would be unique and interesting and we were seeking like we came up with a ton of ideas like where could this be located and like in what type of world would be cool and the game dev team was like coming up with all kinds of ideas and brainstorming um and i i think I swear I remember somebody pitching like, put it on a turtle, <laughs> on the back of a turtle. You know, I, I feel like that's that's coming from somewhere too, but I can't put my finger on it. Um, and so like that kind of, I if I remember correctly, that kind of like started some ideas around like, it could be on something moving um, and somebody pitched it uh, to be on a train, which sounded like pretty crazy, especially like a train in hell to us. And that kind of craziness appealed uh, to a number of us. Uh, as something that would be uh, an interesting place to put the game. Um, some people compare Monster Train or mention Snowpiercer, which I've watched and I liked, and I think a number of other people on the team have too. I'll say that I don't, I don't, I wasn't personally thinking of Snowpiercer much when we were we were making Monster Train and deciding what its uh, location would be. Um, so, yeah, it, I'm sure that was like in our minds somewhere. So that may have been related to it somewhat. Um, you know, Dante's, the uh, kind of the rings of hell come from this classic literature, right? Dante's Inferno. Um, so some of it's coming from there, too. I don't know. Uh, but really, honestly, it was like we just thought it was cool, basically. I think I've said that on stream before. It's just like we just wanted to find something we thought was kind of out there and cool. So a big train in hell sounded pretty darn cool to us. All right. Carbon Shark 465. One thing that I would like with the morsels is if they do not die... They did not go into the pool of cards that can be reformed. Okay, so I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Um, and most reforming, you can choose what you want. So it doesn't really affect that. So Carbon Shark 465, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're really concerned mostly about the... Um, it's like the Dark Calling path, right? Uh, where it re reforms two randoms, and you may not want morsels. So... Um, We'll think about that. I don't have a solution for that right now, but we hear that feedback, uh, and so we will consider it. All right, Malt 222. I'd like to see an expansion where the demons and angels go on holiday to the Bahamas and have to battle the water world together. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Can't promise we'll do that, but yeah, like a beach theme sounds perfect. Could be really hot. Hot day goes along with hell. All right, Kyle Cleave, have you ever considered adding Twitch integration? Yes, we have considered it. Allow viewers to select cards a la Slay the Streamer. I have not seen Slay the Streamer, but I can guess what it is based on what you're saying. A Twitch add-on, oh no, you explained it. That allows you to hover cards and so on. Um, would be excellent for Twitch streamers. Yeah, I think it's cool. So what we do have is we have an official uh, Monster Train API that if you're a developer, you can get access to. If you want access to that, please contact us on Discord uh, somewhere. You know, you can get access to the development team there. And there are a number of people throughout the world that have access to that right now. One has built a Twitch chat bot that does something kind of akin to the official Discord bot where you can look up cards and see them and so on. But in terms of building a Twitch extension where you can hover your mouse over the stream and see what cards do and so on, uh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, we are not planning to officially make one right now. Um, if somebody else comes up with some way of making that happen without official dev team support, more power to you. Um, the official Monster Train API does allow you to look up things like card images and so on. So it certainly has a number of the building blocks that would be helpful for building out such a thing. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. We want the community to pick up some of these things and we're going to support the official API with various ways to gather data about the game, uh, which could be used also for building wikis and things like that. So um, yeah, no official plans right now, but I think it would be fun basically, but we are spending our development time on things like adding new content above a official Twitch integration right now. All right, J-Dog the Joker. What kind of new gems in shops are you thinking about adding? Uh, so upgrades, yeah. 
I was thinking that one of the guarantees, a card is always drawn in the opening hand. Um, <clears throat> so actually we have that, that mechanic is already implemented, but yeah, I don't know why that's not on, a, uh, on an upgrade at all. We just put that on Dante actually. If you choose, um, let me jump over to the game. If you choose one of the new expert challenges or you just put uh, this Dante mutator on the game, uh, so true champion is this expert challenge. If you don't have a champion, uh, you don't have a champion and Dante will help you out instead. So it gives you the Dante's comedy mutator. Start with Dante the deceptive. Um, in this, we put a keyword on the card called intrinsic, which makes it start in your hand. So we actually, we've got the tech and so on for that. Uh, we could hook that up to the game now. I don't know why we haven't. Uh, there must be a reason that uh, our design team didn't want to for some reason, but yeah, I think we are definitely considering adding more merchant upgrades. Uh, I don't know which in particular, so that does seem like an obvious one. Um, there are some, there's like one that's clan specific per clan right now, like the one from the Hellhorn adds Rage, the one from um, the Melting Remnant adds Burnout and so on. So maybe we'll be able to add more clan specific ones, which I think can be interesting too. So, yeah, I uh, don't have a great answer for that right now, but it's something we're, we're still considering because I think it definitely, like, adds more variety to runs. Like, that's what we definitely want to do things that add more variety to runs overall. Um, so things like new types of battles, new types of upgrades, new types of concealed caverns events, those types of things definitely, like, just add to the overall richness of the game. All right, Alpoco Patroleros. I think one of the coolest things in the game is the design of the melting. I really like them too. The other factions are cool, but you can definitely see their inspirations. Melting is fully unique and freaking cool as hell. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I do like it too. I really like uh, Rector Flicker. I think he looks awesome. All right, Sky01. Right now, when someone sends me a run link, I can't open it unless I'm at home by my computer and willing to start up Monster Train. Has there been any talk about also being able to see runs through your site? Um, yeah, so we're not, right as of right now, we're not implementing an official website for the game that has that information. I believe you can get all of it from our API, though. So theoretically, somebody can build that. Right now, we are not, as the dev team, officially doing it. Um, and if you can't get everything that's needed to kind of see the details of it via the API right now, although I think you already can, um, then uh, we could add it, we could expand the API to be more powerful and be able to uh, explore more types of data. Uh, the one thing I can say right now is you can use the Discord bot in the official Discord, which is at discord.gg forward slash monster train, or just search for monster train uh, in the Discord discovery feature. Um, that has the ability to show things like the details of a, um, of a share code, like what is the challenge exactly and so on. So. Um, yeah, so there's some ways to see that right now. An official website to browse it all would be even better. I know one of the people who we gave API access to uh, said that they were looking into that, but I don't know what kind of status they have on that. And if you're interested in getting involved as a developer and want to use our API, please join us on Discord and reach out. All right. Do, do, do. Okay, interesting. Slightly off says, the demand for infinites comes from the feeling of sad when you crush the final boss and never got to use the deck to its limit. Sure, I hear you. So saying we will give you new cards doesn't address that feeling of lacking. Is there something planned to scratch that itch? Um, yeah, so I think our lead designer would be better to, to talk about this. Um, his name is Avrim on uh, Discord. Um, Andrew in real life. So yeah, I mean, I I hear you. Yeah, I think like once it gets super powerful though, like there are combos in the game right now in Monster Train where it feels great when you crush Seraph with your super powerful deck, right? But then if you continue forward beyond that, it's like, what if you just crush the next battle and the next one and the next one? Like, is that gonna be super fun? Like maybe for like a little bit, right? But we don't think, it just seems like it might be really challenging to come up with an infinite mode um, that would keep your interest as long as you know maybe you're expecting like if it's just too easy you're not going to be interested right so yeah it, it's a uh, it's interesting to think about what kind of design would make sense to really make that something compelling so um, yeah we hear the feedback we've definitely heard it a number of times uh, and 
or thinking about it. Let's put it that way. So, all right. Okay. Whew. 40 minutes in. I don't see any other questions right now. I'm sure it's the second I say that, another one's going to appear. Um, at least no questions that my little friendly community friends, Amy, have sent over to me. Um, so we can look at the game. Let's look at the game. Standard run. Let's play something. I only have 19 more minutes to in my stream here, but uh, let's do something. What do I want to play? So you're getting some love for uh, the Melting Remnant, and uh, there were quite a few balance changes to Rector Flicker, so why don't we play that? Let's see, what else do we want to do here? Sure, what the hell, I'll play Covenant 25. Let's see what happens. Do we want to add any mutators to this? Hmm. Why not? Let's do something. Let me just randomize and see what we got. What do we get? Zoom Enhance. All cards have one additional upgrade slot. That's nice. Acid Rain. Two damage after combat. That one was already in the game. And Bleeding Cash. That's another new one. So the first and third one are new. Lose one gold, one coin whenever a friendly unit takes damage. That does suck. Hmm. Acid Rain's real tough with the Melting Remnant, too. Let's let's randomize again. All right, this highly reactive. Triggered abilities on friendly units trigger an additional time. That's a new one. And One Track Mind. The path you take on the map is chosen automatically. Let's give that a shot. All right. GKX says, is, is there a reason that there is not a countdown indicator for boss turn? It is my only gripe with the game. Uh, we've definitely heard feedback about that before. Uh, I think... It wouldn't hurt to add to the game in any way, basically, is my opinion, personally. I don't know how other people on the dev team feel. Um, but we do think that over time, as you play it, most people usually like kind of get the feel of it and know, um, just based on experience. Uh, but yeah, I I think we definitely will we'll consider that one for sure. Like, It doesn't seem like it would hurt, and people have asked for it before. So if we have time for it, I think we could we could put in something like that. All right, clever name already taken. Is the API read-only right now? Can mods also affect the state of the game? Uh, the API is definitely read-only. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's people also working on mods, which modify the game's source code uh, or inject things in different ways. So if you're interested in joining those people, also come to Discord. Uh, there's a Discord channel specifically about modding. All right, um, let's look at our run. So we've got Seraph the Diligent, Devour Your Spells. I'm not going to have time to get to Seraph, so let's just see what happens with our mutators. Molten Encasement, Fortify, Sacred Wicks. All right, Triggered Abilities happens twice. That is going to be real nice with Molten Encasement because Extinguish is a trigger. But we don't get to choose our path, and we lose gold when we take damage. So let's see what happens. We want Pyre Armor or Spells Gain an Upgrade Slot. Well, knowing that I'm not going to be able to finish the run, I'm going to go for Pyre Armor, so hopefully it keeps me alive longer. All right, so here are two of the paths, and Burn Bright, excuse me, was the one that I didn't have um, showing in my logbook earlier. So <clears throat> Burn Bright was nerfed a bit. Uh, this used to be 60-60, I think, on the previous live version of the game. So in Wild Mutations, we brought this one down because it had the highest win rate, and we just thought it was overpowered relative to the other two. But we brought up the strength of the other two paths, so Accumulator got a pretty significant buff across the three levels. So let's go for Accumulator and see if we can put it to good use. All right, Retribution. Non-boss enemies enter with spikes three against the Heaven's Priest. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for it. What the hell? Let's see if we die on level one. I definitely have before on Covenant 25. Uh, in one of the new expert challenges, I think it's called Dangerous Minds. It's one of the hardest ones. And uh, yeah, I've died in level one before. I'm not ashamed to admit it. All right, let's throw this guy here. Oh, baby, it's even better that we took Harvest. I wasn't even thinking about it. Oh, you know what? The, uh, <laughs> the lose gold trigger is going to double too. But Harvest doubling on every kill, that is juicy from our highly reactive mutator. 
Uh, but funnily enough, bleeding cash is also a trigger. So we're gonna lose money at double the raid too. Ooh, that is rough. Spikes is definitely not the best thing you wanna have with bleeding cash either. Probably should not have taken that additional uh, challenge on. So, all right, let's see what happens here. Keep him alive, gonna go a little bit greedy. Oh, I can never remember. Okay, we gotta do something visually. I've been talking about this with the dev team. Like, uh, on Covenant 10 and above, whenever you summon a unit into the third floor, they're dazed on summon. Um, and I often play at below Covenant 10, so I keep forgetting. I'm sure people who play all the time always remember, but we should do something visually to, uh, to make that more obvious. All right, well, I'll just throw that guy up there too. Mm. Well, I'm losing a lot of gold, but I am getting a lot of triggers for my champ here. All right. Definitely want to throw him down there. Get rid of that guy. All right, tutorial. I've read that tutorial before. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I should have put the other guy in front. Oh well, mistakes were made, it's okay. It's looking good on this battle overall. All right, ooh, and we got our molten encasement, that's gonna be even better. Okay, we got a win. Yeah, double triggers are really good with the harvest flicker. We're gonna lose all of our gold here though, it looks like. There was the Molten Encasement double trigger too. That was nice for extra stealth. Mmm, 16 gold. Brutal. Let's see, what do we want here? We have one Sacred Wix. I feel like the Harvest is harvest is so good, I kind of want to just take mold in here. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, these guys all have triggers, so double rage, double AOE damage. I think I'll go for the AOE damage, because I could get even more kills immediately, further buffing my Harvest Flicker. Now we just saw, I did not click. Uh, this is a kind of function of one track mind. Shout out to Menshi for coming up with this name, one of our players in the private beta. Uh, it used to be called Uncontrollable Train, which is way more boring than One Track Mine. The path you take on the map is chosen automatically, so I did not choose the left side, although I'm okay with it. So let's see what we got. Rail Beater and Horned Warrior. Probably because my Harvest Flicker is going to get so beefy in terms of health, I'll probably go for the Horned Warrior to try to get kills with his enhanced attack power. Don't really care about Endless right now. Might give him, well, endless, yeah, hold on, endless on molten encasement might be really good. Let's see. Do we have enough gold to buy both? Just barely. Let's do it. So I'll put the attack on the horned warrior, and we'll throw endless on one of these guys. Because the amount of stealth is just going to be ridiculous here, so that is pretty good. And we're left with one coin. One measly coin. Which I'm sure we will lose almost instantly in the next battle from Bleeding Cash. Hmm. Enemies get more attack. Let's try it. So what do I want to do here? If I just play Rector Flicker in front, he's dead. Uh, even if I chump block with my drag, I guess I could chump block with both my drag and my train steward. In that case, I think he would take no damage if I did that. My horned warrior, however, I couldn't play in the same room, which I really kind of want to, to get kills from him. He's going to have a really bad time with spikes anyway, so maybe I'll just put him up there. We'll see how that goes. And I think I want him in front. Yeah, there we go. Too bad I had molded in my starting hand, not what I wanted. There goes all my money. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's get rid of that 
guy. Actually, I want to protect my Horned Warrior here, so I'm going to play that guy up there. Oh, I want to be greedy. I want to go for the Collector, but I should probably not do that. I probably need to kill... I really don't want my Horned Warrior to take damage, so I probably need to kill the Conduit Redirector here, I think. And my Train Steward will absorb the damage from these two guys. Throw him in there. Let's see. Let's see. Simon, I'm curious, what is the reason for the minus one capacity being a random floor compared to the days being a set floor? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe it should be. I think, yeah, the Covenant 10 friendly units on the top floor enter with days is probably like the most controversial one of the uh, Covenant effects. So, I mean, I wouldn't say like, we're never going to change it. We might change it if we feel we need to. So, something that we would definitely consider. Maybe it is better if it's random. Mm, I wish I could get... Well, double trigger on that was still nice. I wish she was in the same room as my champ, though. Looks nice. Might as well play him. All right. Looks like we won. <laughs> Got him. All right. Let's see if we can get through Daedalus. All right. What do we want? Do we want another molded or a draft? Both combo pretty well with our champ. Hmm. I'll take the draft just for fun. Mix it up. Welder helper double summon with armor is a lot of armor. He doesn't die though, so he doesn't trigger harvest. If we put the armor on our champion, that's not bad, though. If we go, like, full frontline blocker with him. Mm, I, I'm not going to go for it. I think it's not quite what we're looking for here. Yeah, I'm going to skip. Oh, more harvest. Good old Wickless Baron and Wickless Tycoon. I think Wickless Baron was also buffed uh, because now we have more room with harvest because of the change to the... Um, the rules around morsels. So, yeah, let's try him. Didn't choose. Damn one track mind. We went this way. I definitely would not have gone this way, I think. I don't really want another unit here. I don't really want either of these guys. I'm actually going to skip. Ooh, and because of our damn bleeding cash, we can't afford our Frenzy Stone. Feels bad, man. All right, we could put more damage on somebody, though. Scales pretty well on the draft. Let's go for that. Let's see what our caverns are. Uh, most Blessed Sword was buffed in the update of, for Wild Mutations. The Thy Holiest Shield was nerfed. And we didn't change. Petrified Skull. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, let's try the, the buffed card. Everyone loves buffs. Most people complain about nerfs. <laughs> but both are important for the overall health of the game, of course. All right. Got our Endless Molten Encasement, so we're definitely might as well play him. Ooh. Hoo -hoo. 
The Molting Imp will give us a lot of Harvest Triggers right here. Who do we want them on? Unf Maybe, ah, uh, you know what I should have done? I should not have played Molten Encasement here, probably. I should have played my two, um, my two units here and then Molten Imp the whole thing and both of them would have benefited from that, so. Little bit of a misplay there. Let's see, let's see. I mean, Wickless Baron gets more attack, but his base attack does start lower. All right, let's just do our champion, it's all right. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Everyone loves crazy trigger chains like that. All right, let's just throw them up there. I mean, I could kill all the enemies using most blessed sword. Why not? We're not gonna be able to play out the run anyways. Uh, do I need to? No, I can use one ember on somebody else, so I'll do it here. Mmm, even more harvest triggers. Try to go fast here. Ah, pff, keep forgetting about that. This guy's real nice here. Oh my goodness, look at this harvesting. Getting out of hand. Looks like we won. Mm, I love all that stealth. That's a really nice combo with uh, highly reactive. Boom, got him. All right, I'm gonna end on a high note. As a reminder, Wild Mutations, the first major free update for Monster Train is out now. It adds 35 new mutators. 15 expert challenges for people who are already at Covenant 25, or you'll get access to them when you get there. Brand new ways to play with the community via the featured community challenges, and more. So please check it out if you haven't already. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have feedback about the game, find us on Discord, Steam forums, Reddit, various places where we are. Uh, yeah, hope you continue to enjoy Monster Train, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.